Hi everyone, uh, thanks for attending this talk. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about uh, scaling Jupyter Notebook in Kubernetes environment. Um, first, a little bit of a uh, short introduction about myself. So my name is Jialin Zhang. Uh, I'm a software engineer uh, uh, working for Apple. Uh, I have been working for Apple's uh, Notebook team for almost six years um, while solving problem for our data science uh, environment. Okay, a uh, little bit about, uh, a little bit of a context here uh, about our data science environment. So basically, uh, uh, we offer our users a notebook as a service. So this um, basically orchestrating uh, a Jupyter notebook server and notebook kernels on uh, users' uh, demand in a Kubernetes environment. Um, so a little bit of introduction about uh, Jupyter itself. Um, so um, Jupyter notebook servers uh, offers an interactive online uh, coding experience uh, to users, while the notebook kernels offers actually offers the compute uh, power and actually power the code execution. So um, our service is orchestrating both of those. So today we can focus in on orchestrating the kernels. Um, so in a typical uh, uh, like a, a user flow, a user can go to our Jupyter uh, notebook server and start a, a uh, kernel launching by simply clicking a predefined kernel specification. Um, our orchestration service uh, uh, will, uh, based on this uh, uh, kernel specification, oh, sorry, sorry, um, based on this kernel specification, uh, it will uh, launch those kernels on behalf of the users in the Kubernetes uh, namespace. Um, typically, uh, uh, a kernel specification is a uh, sorry, is a uh, blueprint for uh, the kernel con uh, kernel orchestration. Uh, so it typically uh, contains uh, what's the type of the, the kernel that user want to launch, such as uh, a Scala Spark kernel or PySpark kernel, etc. Uh, it also contains other uh, specific required properties uh, during the orchestration. Um, yeah, so, so in short, kernel specification is a, a blueprint for uh, launching a kernel. And so users typically find, find um, that launching such uh, applications in Kubernetes um, taking minutes to finish, uh, especially for some kernels like uh, Spark kernels, which is typically a customized Spark cluster. Uh, including uh, Spark driver and multiple executors, uh, launching those applications uh, typically take minutes. So our data time scientists find that waiting time pretty painful. Um, so in order to tackle that uh, like uh, pinpoint, so we basically find a solution of uh, um, pre-warming the notebook kernels uh, in the user's namespace. When we talk about um, pre-warming, what we mean is that choosing a few kernel specification that we think that user might like and want to use um, like uh, today, and then launching those kernels ahead of time and um, keep them in standby and waiting for user to pick those up. So we like to call those group of uh, um, pre-warmed kernel that in a standby mode, um, a, a pull. Like basically like all those kernels that's not being used, not being picked up by user, things that was the kernel that's launched by service, um, like in standby, every, we, we, we think those group of kernels as a, a virtual pull. Um, so um, typically like when user come to us and then try, trying to uh, happen to pick uh, like a kernel specification that we have a kernel ready in the pool. So uh, during the launching experience, all we needed is just to take the 
uh, kernel out of the pool and make the connection between the kernel and Jupyter server. So this process uh, actually just takes seconds. So instead of waiting uh, minutes, a uh, user able to get a running kernel in seconds. So let's see a quick demo. Um, so in this demo, the bottom half shows a typical kernel launching, which usually take minutes. Well, the top, uh, top half shows a, a, a pre-warm kernel launching experience. You can see the kernel is already ready. It takes seconds and users start to execute the code. Um, So um, by pre-warming our kernels, uh, we basically reduce our launching latency by 96%. Um, in the scale-wise, uh, uh, launching latency reduced from minutes to seconds. Um, this improves our users' productivity uh, by avoiding to waiting too long. So we know managing a kernel pool is not an easy task. Um, we, in our backend uh, services, we trigger a cycle of uh, like scaling up the pool or scaling down the pool periodically. Um, when we try to make uh, like a choose on behalf of user which kernels to pre-warm, um, we try to make the best prediction we can. Um, so far, the algorithm is by uh, ranking the kernel specification by users' uh, past uh, launching frequency uh, of, of, certain, of this uh, um, specification. And we choose uh, those ones that was launched most frequently in the past, uh, like, a, like a maybe past three days, something like that. And then we would guess user one probably want to use this kernel again. So we try to make our best guess. So that's uh, when we're scaling up. Uh, we are pretty mindful about like uh, uh, keeping uh, the like uh, the uh, the resource control of the entire pool. Um, so basically, like um, we might sometimes like when we scaling up or scaling, uh, uh, like we if we find the uh, current uh, usage of the namespace, start approaching the namespace quota limit, uh, we will uh, like start it to like pause the scaling up or like uh, even start to uh, scale down the kernels. And also the entire pool uh, size will be less than 10% uh, of the entire namespace quota. Uh, we, we're trying to um, make the pool not not like uh, taking over the entire uh, resources and uh, like interfere the user's normal usage of the namespace. Um, so uh, when we're scaling up, uh, we fill in the pole and when we're scaling down, we move the kernels from the pole. Um, so we try to uh, make sure we use those uh, resources uh, like uh, very responsibly and efficiently. Uh, having too many kernels just stay in this pool and not being picked up by user and used by the user, it, it could be a, a, a very wasteful if we are not very careful. So uh, we actually actively like uh, in our tier uh, down, uh, like a scaling down uh, cycle, we actively detecting kernels that's in pool that have been stayed there for too long and uh, we will tear those down and uh, uh, like uh, free those resources. And uh, when we're picking up the uh, kernel specification that we want to uh, pre-warm, we, we intended to choose those ones uh, with uh, like a smaller initial uh, resource footprint because we want when the, they are in standby mode, we want them to stay small because they're not being used. Uh, when it's actually picked up by user, uh, like for example in Spark uh, kernels, they have a dynamic allocation. Uh, uh, executors can scale up, um, like uh, on the users depending on the user's need. Uh, so. This feature is usually used in a very large uh, namespace with richer resources like um, 
so so that uh, in a sense that we use these actual resources by but uh, uh, by, by leveraging a little bit actual resources we uh, uh, make our uh, like data scientists like launching experience a little bit uh, better like save that uh, some of them developing time um, so uh, all the uh, eligible namespace is auto detected uh, and uh, like uh, auto enabled um, and it's managed by the backend system. Um, there's a still a few area to uh, explore. Uh, what if we can make a better prediction like uh, when we're choosing which kernels to, to pre-warm, we, uh, we, we design a better algorithm and make this efficient, that would re reduce some of the uh, waste. Uh, also, like uh, uh, right now, we are time triggered uh, when we're scaling up and down. What if is uh, water, uh, water triggered, meaning uh, there will be a water uh, watching for the namespace uh, resource change, right? Like if there's a um, uh, uh, there's more resource now, or there's a, uh, like a less resource now, uh, we, we we can have a faster uh, like a. Uh, reaction time, and then um, we will have a very timely skill, uh, scaling. Um, so, so the, with that, it would uh, uh, also be able to enable us uh, enable those uh, like uh, 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 namespace with uh, uh, like a uh, um, less resource quota. Um, so, uh, with that, uh, I conclude uh, today's talk. Yeah, thanks for attending the talk. Um, I'm not sure if there's a Q&A session or anything. Uh, um, do you guys have any questions? Okay, thank you so much for attending the talk. <laughs>